He's... He's finally dead! So, Game of Thrones, Season 4, Episode 2, The Lion and the Rose, uh... <laughs> This episode was just fantastic all the way around. I'm gonna start with the smaller stuff before I get to the big revelation of this episode. And spoilers in case you didn't realize that. So there are a few scenes in this episode that are just small and kind of remind you of where characters are. You see Stannis back at Dragonstone, he's sacrificing more people to the Lord of Light. And I could have sworn that he was already leaving for the wall at the end of the last season, but oh well, he's still there. You get to see Bran and Jojen Reed and Mira and Hodor there beyond the wall, and now, now Bran knows what he must do, and that's all you get for this episode. Uh, I liked seeing the Dreadfort because I knew that we were going to see it soon because it was in the intro last week. And speaking of the intro, I like how they continually just throughout the seasons have shown burning Winterfell for no reason. Not no reason, it's kind of to remind you. I just find it kind of funny at this point that it's just still there, it's burning all over the place, and they just keep showing it even though no one's there. Back to the Dreadfort, you get to see Roose Bolton and his bastard Ramsay and his servant Reek. That was an intense scene with uh, the whole cutting of the face, not cutting, shaving of the face. I think it's interesting to see that Ramsay wasn't doing doing everything that he did under orders that Ruse wanted to actually trade Theon back to the Iron Islands, but instead, uh, Ramsay just kind of, you know, tortured him and cut his dick off instead. Speaking of which, that first scene in the episode when you saw Ramsay just chasing that girl through the woods and then his, his, I don't know what you want to call it, his friend shot her in the leg and having the dogs eat her, it's like, yeah, I really needed a reminder of how terrible Ramsay was as a person. Thank you, show. Another big development in this episode was the fact that Shay and Tyrion, they've got a lot of problems. I mean, aside from the fact that Tyrion just sent her away at, in this episode, but earlier on when Jamie and Bronn are training, Bronn says that he's been fucking her. And that to me was a sh big shock, because he wasn't joking, it didn't seem like. I could be wrong, he could be joking, but I don't think he was at all. And that's something where it's like... I just, I was speechless. <laughs> and then Tyrion finally sends her away. We haven't seen the last of her, and that's... There's just no way, because they're not just going to end that storyline like that, and Shay's in the type of character that's just going to leave like that. And that scene was also really sad, I guess, because Tyrion, you could tell that he did not want to say what he was saying to her, and Peter Dinklage did a great job in that scene. And let's get on to Joffrey here. I mean, they were just sending him and his cunt levels to an all-time high in this episode, and now I kind of see why. But, I mean, like, when they were first giving him the gifts and he got the book and he was like, Oh, okay, he has to show restraint. That was kind of funny how he couldn't just be a complete jackass about the gift Tyrion got him. And then he chopped it up with the sword from Ned Stark's blade. And there you go. And the wedding ceremony itself with him and Marjorie was really well done. The set was just beautiful as usual on this show. But just that scene in particular, I just noticed it and how amazing it was. They spent a good portion of time on this wedding, as they usually do when there are weddings on this show. And as usual on this show, these weddings tend to get out of hand and end in death. And I'm moving a little bit ahead of myself, but my th the thing about this wedding was the fact that Joffrey was just being a complete, complete asshole. And he's a complete asshole anyway, but... Just everything he did got worse and worse and worse, from throwing the coins at the the people who were playing music, to having people throw shit at that poor guy who's just kind of doing nothing at this point, and then having Tyrion pour him his wine, just complete asshole. And it's been a long time coming, and he is finally fucking dead. He got poisoned, and the way... <laughs> I was thinking back a little bit, like to earlier on in the episode when he started drinking. He was drinking a lot, first of all, and you can see subtle coughs earlier on in the episode, and then he starts coughing more and more, and then eventually, you know, asphyxi asphyxiates and dies. Someone poisoned him, I'm pretty sure it's not Tyrion, because... Actually, I'm 100% sure it wasn't Tyrion, because he wouldn't just stand there. I gotta say, though, I just had a big, goofy grin on my face when he was dying, and, and having Cersei just there, she's helpless, she can't do anything. Cersei was being a bitch throughout the entire episode, too, to everyone around her. Just so great. I'm glad Joffrey's dead. I've just... We've put up with his shit since season one, and he's finally dead. I can't wait to see where the show goes next week, and I just... I loved, loved, loved this episode. 
I'm gonna give this episode of Game of Thrones an A+. So what'd you guys think of this episode? Did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? How could you not enjoy Joffrey dying? I mean, come on. Write your beautiful comments down there and tell me what you think. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button down there. Because if you don't, I'll poison your wine if you drink that sort of thing. I'm not gonna do it.